And so the phalos are exceptionally strong. But the neat thing about the pans and the sticks, if it granulates in the tube, it's going to granulate in the sticks and it's going to granulate in the, in the half pans because it's the, it's the same pigment, it's the same binder. Hello, Juliet. Hello, Besnick. So this one is going to be the lunar blue. So lunar blue, we would expect a huge amount of granulation. That's a lot of water. You can see how fastly it granulates. So with the half pans, and I, I'm, I think next week, Carolyn Devil will be with me on Friday, and she's going to show a, a lot of things. One of them is going to be the masking of the uh, ground and how to use the ground, etc. cetera. Um, I'm going to bring somebody on to show the practical use of the, of the pans. I like that. That way you can ask questions. If you have questions for me, I'm trying to read both sides here. Um, I guess people are having some connection problems. Okay, lunar blue, again, that, you know, that granulation. This is going to be indigo. So Stella, Angela, um, here, either Facebook or Zoom aren't giving me any um, any feedback that they're having issues. Usually, when I have communication problems, they'll do that really quickly. So, do any of you have any questions? So, Jody says, I know the paint is the same, but what is the benefit to pans versus tube? Um, it used to be, used to be, when we first started selling into Europe, almost a, a high degree of people were using. Um, pans because people knew how to use pans and they didn't know how to use the tubes and Maya just said it's easier for planeer certainly easier to travel with I mean there's no question that if there's TSA or some they look at this versus the tube there's just no issue with it um, it's really just if you want to put this tool in your toolbox
So Anna says opposite here with the watercolor chart in front of me so I can see the pigment index number simultaneously. Yep, you can access it online, the um, color charts online. I, before I meet with you, I go ahead and I print out. So I have the color, I have the common name if you were to ask me, um, the characteristics of it, and then the common pigment name and the, and the color index name. But all that's available online as well. So Anna says, which product is the best economy? Um, oh boy. Um, so it, again, it's which tool you want in your toolbox, but by far the stick, because it is a single price that happens to be less than a series one tube, and it has series one, two, three, and four. It is by far from an economy standpoint, a, a, great, a great price. Um, there's 51 of those compared to 261 colors. I made it again just as a different um, ability to have a different tool in your toolbox. I like that. I like it personally when it comes to my own tools and how I use tools. And I thought artists would also enjoy that as well. The stick has more pigment than either the tube and or the pen. Okay, so those are those right there. John, just a question. Is the uh, pigment info listed on the pan? Yes, Mark. So um, I'm gonna show it to you. Oh, it is. I'm at the age where I have to use this. <laughs> the, uh, you're not gonna be able to see it, but it's back here. It's on the back of the, it's on the back of this. It's in any of the sets, it's actually on the box of the set. And for individuals, it's on the back of the card. Um, it's on the back side of the card in this very small writing. And that's because we have to do French and English. For example, this is the um, lunar blue. And the lunar blue, when I flip it over into my magnifying glass, it says pigment marge black, PB11, color index 77499, um, thalocyanine blue, pigment, pigment blue 15. So it'll give you all the information on the back. You'll need one of these if you're my age, because that writing is small. Thank you. That's a great question. Thanks. Uh, you're very welcome. My pleasure. So the next one's a really popular color. We tried to pick the most popular colors in the sticks. Um, we asked artists to give their input. I mean, when I work with Ron, we love color. So no matter what the color is, we go, oh, that's a really neat color. Well, you also want to be practical about what artists might want to use too. It's going to give them the most creativity. Um, we did that with the uh, pans. Um, Jane Blondell was kind enough to give her input. We had several artists that gave us their input. You know, if you had these pans, they're gonna give the most flexibility. So that's kind of why we picked the 45, which is not gonna be the end of what we make. It was just kind of the initial onset of pans. So this one's gonna be buff titanium. Let me flip this back down again. Buff titanium is a, is a very popular color. I'm gonna put this to the side. Yeah, the one thing I like about Zoom is if you want to ask a question, and I, I really super enjoy both sets of you asking questions, but I'll do so, please. This is going to be buff titanium. They are heavy pigment low. They, they just darken your water really super quickly. So very, very heavy pigment loads. Condensed. OK, it's going to be the, the buff titanium. OK, 
pigment white number six, shade one. It's actually a teal. Again, simple, simple focus. So a little bit hard to see. A little hard to see on the white with this camera, it's hard to pick it up. But there's the buff titanium. Yeah, I never thought about what I do as watching paint dry, but I guess I guess that's I guess that's correct. It's kind of fun. This is ultramarine blue, my favorite color. I'm sure the vast majority of you either have ultramarine blue or you have French ultramarine blue. So this is the ultramarine blue. For me, as a, I'm not even a novice, it's how much water do you add? Because these really suck up water. They need water. So there's the ultramarine blue. Yeah, for a price point, the sticks are certainly uh, pretty phenomenal. This is one that most of you probably have. It is Queen Gold. So that's what Queen Gold looks like when it's dry. Dry in, um, in mass. So now we'll wet it out. I just saw a car outside my window that looked like it was a burnt orange. Quite beautiful. It was a truck. So buff titanium, buff titanium, and that's the ultramarine blue. Ultramarine blue, and this is the queen gold. So this one is, uh, we've moved to this one quite a bit over the months. This is lunar black. So a little while ago, we saw lunar blue. This is lunar black.
So Brooklyn says, I saw a P in one of the packages. Does that mean there's a there's Primatech? Absolutely, you're correct. Let me show you that here. So that's the lunar black. Again, you get that gonna get that granulation, high granulation with the lunar black. So I didn't bring all of the um, half hands out with me today. I just brought ones I wanted to show you because I thought they were really um, cool in effect. Uh, so here, the Primatech, Primatech colors. And um, this one is gonna be the um, Serpentine from Australia. And this one is the Green Appetite. So let's look at the, let's look at both of those. This one from Germany. I think I've lost the chat side from Zoom. So if you're asking questions, I, I don't see them. Is Tiger Eye in the pan? So Tiger Eye is not in the pan. So green appetite, it's going to be very granulating, as we saw in the, the watercolors, for example, and it's, it's very granular. It's, one of the, it's, it's not as granulating as the lunar black, very few things are, um, but it is, it being green appetite is very, very, very granulating. Very granulated. Yeah, the green sonality says green appetite really wet so beautifully. It is. It's a very, it's a, it's a really neat mineral. And let's look at the serpentine. So I went to the serpentine mine. It was in Tasmania um, when, when people in the U.S., I think, certainly myself, I can speak for myself, uh, draw a, a map of what they, uh, of Australia. The one part I've always left off has been Tasmania. And Australia is a very beautiful country. And Tasmania, for me, um, was, was, was a breathtaking place. It was just beautiful in the mountain ranges it had. Um, just a wonderful place. And it was neat to see the mine and the person that ran the mine. Beautiful, really enjoyed my time there. And the rest of Australia and New Zealand. There we go. So green appetite, you see how it has that really, really um, great granulation. And then the serpentine, also that granulation. So what you'd expect out of the tube, you can expect out of the uh, hands. But not so much on your finger like the sticks, a little bit, but not huge. Okay, and guess on this one. So See if you can guess. 
Oh, Joanne, I like that. Joanne says, who knows how many greens are actually in the DS line? So green with the name green or green because they contain a green pigment. No matter what, that's a, that's a really good question. Okay, what color do you think that is? So I will tell you this color right here is a granulating color and it contains ultramarine blue. It contains um, viridian and it contains anthraconoid red. What do you think it would be? <laughs> yes, Magellan says moon glow. Yes, it is absolutely moon glow. And Melody says moon glow. Moon glow, that's correct. Good job. Joanna says moon glow. Yep, you're all, everyone is correct. or not. So according to my spreadsheet, 20 of the cells have the word green in them, have the word green. So there's 20 that have, oh, maybe I should have said that. I see some of you have the color charts out of your looking. Anne-Marie, count of 41, if you click German greenish. All right, there we go. Nice job. Okay, so let me see. I only have two other ones I brought out. I brought these out because um, I like what George and Giovanni were doing in, in, in painting out the colors. And this one is going to be undersea green. And then the last one is going to be Quinburn orange. But you can see this is moon glow. You were correct when you said moon glow. Um, the granulation, whether it's in a stick or it's in a pan or in a tube, if it granulates, you're going to see the granulation because it's the same exact pigment. It's the same exact binder. What, what's the difference in the three, the tube, the stick, the pan, is water, right? And then you have more control in the pan because you get to add exactly how much or how little water you want to use. So you put those down for a second. And let's look at the last two. There's 45, I didn't bring all 45 with me. Um, I just wanted to show you some of uh, the ones that I thought were, were extremely um, interesting and kind of played on what we've done before. So this one is gonna be undersea green. Hi, John. There is a question about light fastness of the moon glow. Someone yes. says that uh, the moon glow failed her light fastness test. So the moon glow is a light fastness of one. It's a light fastness of one, which means it's a hundred plus years. And I can tell you how we do that. We use a xenophotometer to do that. That is Anna Marie. Maybe she can explain what happened to her. You no, know, that wouldn't help me because it's how something is done under a um, laboratory environment using the machines versus something that's done at home. I'm sure it, it, it's kind of apples and oranges. 
Um, mm -hmm. So we use machines because they're beyond what the human eye can see. For example, this is this is the moon glow that we do our did our test on. This is it. This part right here is exposed to the photospectrophotometer. So this is the xenon. This is the photospectrophotometer. And then both of them give the computer readout. So this is the computer readout. And you can see right here, it is at a 3.25, 3.25. If it's between zero and four, then it's a category one. Category one means light fastness one, which means 100 plus years. So it's just it, it, the same example would be if you get a, a half pan and I could have Mark, I could have Gabriel, Anna, Agnes show what they, uh, what their drawdown looks, looks like. The differences are multifold. It can be how much water did you use? What kind of water did you use? That's less so, but how much water did you use, et cetera? Um, so this would be under laboratory conditions and it's different if you're putting it, for example, in a, in a, in a window with bright light. If you look at the, um, the test they do in Arizona, it's on a slant table. So it's done out in, um, oh, what's the, where's the state, where's the, let's see if they do that. It's done in Yuma, Arizona, and it's done on a slant table. So lots of ways of doing it. What, what we do, because there's little variance of it and it's repeatable time after time after time, it's not um, how bright the sun was or wasn't, we do it under um, machines. So it's consistent time and time again. So, and I can ask you offline to go over it with me. That's fine. I, I, I love learning, but that's how we do it. And that's how, how we come up with the light fastness. We also get the light fastest from the manufacturer, and we also get the light fast from the from the testing board. But I will text you, Anna. Okay, so this one right here is going to be quinacridone burnt orange. It's a very pretty color. Have any of you, any of you watching? I can't see if you're on Facebook, it's difficult for me to, to see. Um, but on Zoom, how, have any of you used the pans? And could you hold up? If you have, can you hold up um, maybe something you've done with them? So Gabriel, behind you, I see artwork. It's kind of neat. And Mark, I see some artwork up behind you. Yeah, that's neat. Is that Miami, Florida? I wish it's San Diego. <laughs> this They're is both. all Daniel Smith, but it's it's not pants. Not pants. That's okay. I I'm I have not painted with pants yet. Oh. Well, San Diego certainly is an awesome place. Thank you for showing that. Thank you for looking. Sometimes I feel like a snoop and I look over your shoulder and see what you have on your walls or in front of you. Okay, it's gonna be the Quinburn orange. Oh, yeah, should do this. So it's gonna be the Quinn burnt orange. So 
So the Quinburn orange, we, we talked about this one before, um, this is a color that the manufacturer has stopped making the pigment. So if you wanted it, you could buy one last, they asked how much did you want to buy? And we bought 15 years worth. But that's it, they're not making this one anymore. People say, um, really good question, What's what stops um, a pigment sometimes uh, to be discontinued? And it's a car color, you know, it's mostly, a lot of these are used in the car industry. They're quite beautiful um, because they're absolutely perfect in their size and their shape. Um, they're very resilient. They're, um, they handle light really, really well. But we as consumers get bored of certain colors and we, we don't wanna buy those colors anymore. Well, the manufacturer doesn't buy that paint anymore. And so it becomes obsolete. Um, and then the other one that has a lot of use of them is just industry in general. I read somewhere that the phthalo blue is sold in the hundreds of tons. So if you can take a phthalo blue, make sure I get the right one here. It's not ultra ring that I'm looking at. So if you can take a phthalo blue, which just a couple dabs off your brush is that bright and you're looking at hundreds or thousands of tons that are used a year, you know it's very, very popular industry. So it's a very, very popular color. When we looked at the um, yttrium manganese, which is this right here, it's that bluest blue out of Oregon. Um, that's being used by industry because it has a very, very high heat ratio and can be used on pipes, plastics, etc. So many of the pigments that we're using for art really uh, were developed for industry. They were developed for the car industry, they're developed for the plastic use, um, lots of other uses. So it's really, really great those, those, those things exist because it allows allows me, for example, to buy pigment um, that probably takes, I think this took, you know, 10 or 15 chemists to come up with it. So they're very, very complex. The other thing that's really kind of neat is for the makeup industry and the pharmaceutical industry, because they, I use a lot of the machines that they come out with. For example, if you buy a tube, those are used for ointments, etc. So really nice that there's other people that um, can come up with the engineering that we can use within the, within the art world. So that's kind of the, the, um, the pans I brought out. Um, let's see, original format has already been used out. I have to find the current template. Orange is new format. So the, the, the quinacridone gold is a new formula. The quinacridone burnt orange is not a new formula. The quin burnt orange is as it has always been. And I have 15 more years of, of pigment for that. The quin gold, we ran out of our 15 years about two years ago. And now that is a different quin gold shade. That's correct, Anna. So the quin burnt orange is as it has always been. And for the next probably 15 years, we'll continue to be. The Queen Gold has made the change. So thank you for letting me clarify that. Oh, you're very welcome. Good, good question. I appreciate it. Um, okay. Yeah, somehow the, the messages kind of work on the Zoom. They seem to work a little bit better on the on the Facebook. But whichever way works for you, it's, it's fine. I enjoy it. Okay, so that's all I had for the pans. I do go back and read all of your comments. And even when I'm done, if you leave a comment, I'll go back and read it. So if there's something 
you wanted to see um, a color in a pan. Um, maybe I can do this real quick too. Here. I think I can do this. In our two screens, it's hard to find that little mouse. There it is. Everyone, Control B. There we go. So those are all the pan colors. I just sent them. You should be able to see them. Um, let me see here. Let me get back to. It's on Facebook as well. I think that made a myth, but it definitely made it on Zoom. So if you want to see any of those colors uh, mixed with anything, let me know. I'm glad to do that. I'll pick them back out again so you can see that. Um, just let me know. I'm glad to do that. Well, thank you for being with me today. Um, Agnes, Mark, Juliet, Joanne, Jody. It's good to see you on both sides. Anna Marie, thank you. Um, there we go, now you're on both sides. Just let me know, and in, in next week we'll have Carolyn Devil, and she'll show us, for example, um, the grounds and how grounds are used. So any questions you have for that, um, please go ahead and ask. Did I do lavender? I didn't do lavender, I'll do lavender tomorrow. Whatever I didn't do today, and any ones you want mixed with something else, I'll do tomorrow. Just let me know. So with that, I'm gonna say goodbye to all of you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for taking your time out. And for some of you, it's the morning. Some of you, it's the evening. Thank you. Gabriel, thank you for showing your work. Uh, Mark, thank you for your question. Stella, goodbye. Angela, goodbye. So goodbye, everybody. I'll see you next time. See you. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>